Hi and hello to everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to create a halfway rectifier using Multisim Live. Okay, as usual, you just type multisim.com in the address bar. Okay, once you click it, um, the Multisim web page will be opened. It's already I have logged in, so I can just create the circuit. If not logged in, I am logging out for you now and I will show you how to log in again. Okay. Because already if you are logged in, your login will be remembered. Okay, so you just you can create a circuit easily. But sometimes you would have logged out, so you have to log in again. Right. Okay, now if you want to log a log out, now I am going to log in. The previous video I have helped, I have said how to create a uh, how to sign up using um, in multisim. Okay. Once you have created your user ID and password, just to type your user ID and password. Now you can log in. Now you can log in. Once you are logged in, you can see options like already I have created only one circuit. This is my profile. Students should create their nickname here and their full name will be coming here. Just you keep your name both and create circuit. Okay. In the green uh, box, you can see create circuit. You click the create circuit. That uh, multi seam uh, simulation page will be opening. Okay, our objective is to create a halfway rectifier. So, what I am doing is here the title is untitled circuit. You can click there, you can see I am clicking here, then you can uh, backspace and you can see you can say halfway rectifier. Halfway rectifier. Okay. Now we know what is required in a multi I mean a half way rectifier. We need a diode. So I am clicking the diode options. This is the toolbox available. Diodes, we can see Zener diode, LED, general purpose diode. I am going for the ordinary PN junction diode. Just click the diode, bringing into the uh, workspace, you put it here. Okay, that's it. Your diode has been put. Next, what is required? You need a load resistance. So click the resistance take the resistor see in the resistance uh, is a passive devices are given in passive devices so many things like inductor capacitors potentiometer many things are there i need only a resistor so i click the r i am i am putting it here i am putting it here right so if i put it here you can see i want the resistor is horizontal now i want to make it uh, vertical so what i do is i can rotate it because this is the rotate symbol just by clicking the rotate i will make it to come in the vertical way right next is i need a ac voltage source for that what is option available so this is the meter voltmeter ammeter will be here this is the ground connection this is the sources i have to click the sources option in sources option as i said earlier in the last video you can see ac voltage source ac current source since for a rectifier we need an alternating voltage source to convert into an pulsating output so i take the ac voltage source i will click it then i will drag it to the screen Okay, I have to once again click it in the screen, the object will be placed. Right now, other things what I need is I need a ground connection. In the ground, there are so many grounds are there. I take this ground, put it in the screen workspace. Okay, now these are the four elements required by me. Right now, I want to connect these elements. Mm -hmm. So, you see, before connecting, you ensure that what is the property of each element, right? So voltage source, voltage source is given as, I see you click the voltage source twice. Okay, you click the voltage source, right? You click the voltage source on the right side, you can see the description. The ID is given as V1. V1 is the first voltage source. You can change it to voltage source, voltage. Give your own name, V1, X1. V1 is the app name or else you can give EM of E1 or simply voltage 1. That is the name you can give and it is asking what is the peak voltage is given as 1 volt you can set the peak voltage based on your question if the question is asked set for 10 volt or 5 volt is up to you i am setting now for us instead of 1 i am setting as 10 volt then what about the frequency of the signal frequency i am saying it is 1 kilohertz that's okay but for example if the power supply our frequency is what is the power supply frequency in india it's 50 hertz so i tabled 50 Okay, these two parameters I have changed in the voltage source. Once you have changed, these changes will be automatically coming in the workspace itself. You can see the name is voltage 1. The volt from 1 volt is changed to uh, 10 volt. From 1 kilohertz, it is changed to 50 hertz. And look at the diode. 
okay if you click the diode you can see the diode properties you see the what is the diode name d1 is given and the important property don't need to change this is reverse saturation current is very small go to the advanced parameter and change only the junction potential vj it is given as 1 volt for a silicon diode we are using it is approximately 0.7 volt so click as 0.7 volt that's it now the diode property is changed now this is the resistance i can say the lower resistance so if i click that twice i can see the uh, specific once i click the element here i can see the specifications in the right side okay now the name of the diode is r1 i can change it to rl to indicate it is the lower resistor what is its value it is given as 1k i am going to change it to i am going to change it to 1.2k 1.2k okay 1.2 kilo ohms right now I, I have given the values now i can connect the elements okay so at the end if i keep i can get the wire symbol and keep the wire bring the wire symbol to the another dot you can see the circle is converging so i again click it there similarly from here keep it at the end you can see a wire symbol bringing it to the resistor end okay similarly other ends also connected okay click it on the exact dot or else okay wherever you can pick it no problem okay i can picking it here keep it dot then go it here okay right next is go keep it straight then go again yes okay thereby we have given the we have connected these elements now i need to measure the voltages okay to measure the voltages this is the first option you can see this v with an probe symbol this is v with probe symbol left hand side if you click that we can see voltages okay bring a voltage voltmeter connected to this point okay this voltage this given what is the name of this voltmeter pr1 pr stands for probe 1 probe 1 <coughs> okay next is i need another voltmeter so what i can do i can make a copy here duplicate or else again i can pick it from here also no problem so i make a copy here i click it again so i have another meter coming with me coming to me i place it at this point okay this is pr2 you can see this is pr1 this is pr2 pr1 is used to measure the input voltage that is voltage 1 pr2 is measured the output voltage across the load okay fine now we are ready to simulate the circuit okay right so this is the run symbol this triangle symbol is a run symbol run button run simulation i just waveform is running waveform is running since it is an alternating waveform you can see it is keep on changing output is also keep on changing okay so if you want to see if you want to stop the simulation if you want to edit anything sir i want to change this 1.2 to 1 kilo ohm now so what i have to do i cannot edit now because it's running waveform is running so i can stop the simulation now i can edit it now i can change it to 1.2 to 1 kilo ohm back back to 1 kilo ohms right next you can see this is a schematic schematic is nothing but the circuit we can see the grapher if i click the grapher here i can see a graph will be opened a graph will be opened right and this is the split screen split screen is it shows both the schematic and grapher Grapher shows only the waveform, uh, schematic shows only the circuit. The third one is both schematic and grapher. So if I click that, I can see both the things, right? Now this is not required. I can minimize this. Okay, now two things are there. Again, I'm going to run the circuit. <coughs> you can see the waveform is running. But it is not inside the scale. So the reason would be like, uh, let me try grapher you can see uh, the waveform is like this okay you see it's going up to 10 volt i cannot see the other half of the waveform the reason is see go to the schematic right if you go into the grapher we can see the waveform waveform is like this what is the property of the waveform uh, uh, grapher if you come down we can see what is the minimum time in which it is 20 millisecond so this is the 20 millisecond this is are going up to 30 millisecond so change it to 0 to i can say um 
100 milliseconds 100 milliseconds okay 100 milliseconds i have changed the uh, minimum time so this is the minimum time this side is a minimum time you can see this is the this is the minimum time this is the maximum time minimum time i changed it to 20 zero and the um, uh, maximum time i changed it to 100 so then what about the minimum voltage minimum voltage is zero here okay so i will change this in the ac waveform that should be negative part also so i am changing since it's plus 10 to minus 10 i am keeping it to minus 12 to plus 12 maximum also i am changing it to plus 12 right just the thing you are changing the scale right now you can see the waveform run the waveform schematic grapher still we are not getting the correct one again you can see the change here the change is not there so bring it to the scale change the minimum what i have said it's 0 to 100 okay now you can see the waveform is there you can split the screen you can split the screen this is the circuit this is the waveform okay this green line because this probe is green green probe is the input and the blue probe blue line is the half wave rectified output now you can take the individual waveform also for that what you have to do is um, for that you have to go for simulator options maximum strip time okay just a moment now the circuit is ready see again i will explain how to simulate if you simulate so click, click this run button the circuit will be running the schematic values are running you can see the voltmeter here in the input voltage voltmeter the output voltage voltmeter but if you want to see the waveform graphically click the graph here you can see the waveform the green line is input waveform and the blue line which is overlap is the half wave rectified waveform okay if you are not getting the waveform properly only thing is you have to adjust this times per division we know for 50 hertz the time cycle is 20 millisecond so if you take it's in a box which in a uh, within this uh, horizontal box uh, it is of how much time duration 20 millisecond okay so 1 by 50 is 20 millisecond so the waveform will be completed in 20 millisecond right so if you change this to 50 millisecond okay by adjusting this you can bring the waveform into this moreover what is this, this is the voltage axis you can change the voltage scale from minimum to maximum so minimum voltage i go to minus 12 maximum is minus plus 12 so you can see the waveform from minus 10 to plus 10 by changing this you can bring it right now uh, you can take it like um, you can see the output pr1 is the input waveform both are same so i have unticked that you can see the only the input now if i uh, both i have not ticked now pr2 only ticked means you can see only the output waveform once this is done, you can export the circuit, simulating circuit, click this schematic image, now the schematic image is exported, okay, this is half a rectifier schematic that I have given save, next is this waveform also, grapher image is a waveform image that is also exported, take some time, yes, grapher image is also exported. So this is the input image, I am exporting the input image also. Okay, now I will show you all the images which I have exported or which I have saved. So this is the half a saved circuit I have exported from our multi sim live to the image. This is a PNG image, this you can send it to mail or WhatsApp. And uh, similarly, I, this is the output email, how to halfway rectified email. We can see only half wave is there, negative part is not there. This is the input image. Input image is plus 10 to minus 10, frequency is of 50 hertz. So the time period is 20 millisecond. Okay, these three images are very important. Okay, this is by doing this all three, we have completed your circuit. Okay, the question may be change the load resistance, do it. Okay, execute the same. Thanks for listening.
happy learning.